On this episode of China Uncensored, what is Xi Jinping thinking? We're back, and it's time. They've spread the rumors. They've tabulated the scores. Ladies and gentlemen, the results of the Chinese Communist Party's 19th Party Congress. Let's look at our seven finalists, the men who have made it to the top of the party, the Politburo Standing Committee. And here they come. Don't they look great in their black suits and red ties? Wait, am I seeing blue ties and gray hair? It truly is a new era. And who has been crowned the ultimate title, Mr. CCP? I see this as not just an approval of my work, but also as like an encouragement that'll make me want to like do even better, you know? Of course, the six day event leading up to this point was incredibly boring. Basically, an official gives a long speech, another official gives a long speech, and then they break up into small groups to do more long speeches. Kind of like the world's worst company retreat. And for our next icebreaker, turn to the official next to you and say your name, plus a quote from Karl Marx that begins with the same letter. Sitting through that event was the hardest test of endurance I've ever gone through. And I say that as someone who, in college, had a professor lecture for three hours about how Buffy the Vampire Slayer was an image of Christ. It was a strange school. And yet, that has nothing on the three and a half hour lecture Xi Jinping gave to kick off the Congress. Seriously though, this meeting was really, really important for the future of China. It was just also really, really boring. Former leader Jiang Zemin was caught yawning. Oh no, wait, he was just catching a fly. When Xi Jinping wrapped up his long speech, even the other, less important former leader, Hu Jintao, was like, a little longer and we'd all be dead. But look at how happy it made Xi Jinping. Not Jiang, though. You might be wondering, what was Xi Jinping thinking? Oh, my friends, he was thinking Xi Jinping thought. Xi Jinping has written himself into the Communist Party's constitution. It's this bit, the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. So what does that stupidly long phrase mean? It means Xi Jinping is only the second Chinese leader after Mao Zedong to have his name put in the party's constitution while he's still in power. It's a big deal. According to Bill Bishop, publisher of Sinocism, it means Xi is effectively unassailable. If you challenge Xi, you are challenging the party, and you never want to be against the party. Yes, welcome to China's Xi Jinping era. Xi Jinping is dominating former amphibian overlord Jiang Zemin. To be fair, Jiang Zemin is kind of guilty of genocide, including that whole let's kill Falun Gong practitioners and sell their organs for profit campaign. So I don't really feel all that bad for Jiang. But for years on this show, I've been talking about how Xi Jinping and Jiang Zemin have been locked in a life or death political struggle. And after this 19th Party Congress, it looks like Xi is closer than ever to winning. State-run media has been singing Xi Jinping's praises. Enshrining Xi's thought into the party's constitution has proved the main highlight of the Congress. And this is how the major Chinese newspapers covered the end of the party Congress. Some of their Instagram filters need a little work. And Xi wasn't above lording his big win over Jiang Zemin. Check out CCTV's footage from Xi's speech. When they all walk out, Jiang is repeatedly obscured by Xi. But you can see former leader Hu Jintao. I don't need a class in Buffy as an image of Christ to know that's symbolism. And check out at the end when Xi shakes hands with Hu, and then, oops, Jiang wasn't in the shot. In fact, in the live broadcast that was later altered for the online version, when she gets to a section of his speech about fighting corruption, emphasizing a zero-tolerance approach toward those in the party who engage in bribery, the camera cut to Jiang. Later, when she starts a sentence with what the people and the masses oppose, what they abhor, the camera once again goes to a close-up of Jiang. 
And if you remember from the headlines earlier in today's broadcast, she had his boy, Liu Shiryu, say Xi Jinping saved the party, saved the military, and saved the country by foiling attempts by Jiang Zemin's guys to take over the party. And let's look at the new guys on the Politburo Standing Committee. Of the six other members, only one has been considered a member of Jiang's faction. But there are also reports that he's already defected from Jiang. If you can't beat him, join him. And having all or nearly all Standing Committee members either neutral or on his side is a big win even though she had to let his favorite anti-corruption czar retire. So, is this it then? Is Xi Jinping now the ultimate power? Has he unquestionably won? Not so fast. For one, the anti-corruption campaign isn't over, which means the factional infighting isn't over. There are still members of Jiang's faction who haven't been fully dealt with, including the final bad guy, Jiang Zemin himself. And just because they're on their way down, doesn't mean that they couldn't still cause a lot of trouble. And with Xi Jinping thought in the party's constitution, Xi is now the guy responsible for the current direction of the Communist Party. He's facing major disasters on all sides, an economy that's imbalanced in crazy ways, a financial system plagued by bad debt, a disastrously polluted environment, and an increasing wealth gap that underlies widespread public unhappiness. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in charge of all that? Seriously, who wouldn't want to? It's up to Xi Jinping now. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. You know, you could have seen this episode earlier if you'd just gone to ChinaUncensored.tv. We upload half-hour episodes there every Friday, free of charge. Check it out now at ChinaUncensored.tv.